In Revelation 20 and verse 15, uh, I'm going to take another run at this. We mentioned uh, a few of these aspects a few months back. I want to take another run to make things perfectly clear <laughs> about what we confused last time. No, not really. Uh, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How many believes the word? So it seems to me, child of God, it's very important that we know our name is written in the book of life. Because if it is not, guess what? It's crispy critter time. (laughs) I've warped you people, I tell you, I don't know. But, you know, we laugh about it, but it is very serious. Uh, There's no second chance after a person leaves this world. And we don't know when that might be. I'm looking for the rapture of the church. I hope the Lord Jesus takes us out of here before long. But I I think he waits on the church to get ready. He waits on the church to get ready. The real church. The fake one's going to be left behind. But if your name's in the book, you're in the real church. Amen. Not an organization necessarily, an institution, a social program. No, it's a spiritual entity on this earth. You don't join it, you're born into it. So if you know your name's in the book of life, could I hear an amen? amen. God bless your hearts. If you can't say that and confess that, you need to give your life to Christ before it's too late. Old people die, young people may. Don't gamble with eternity, please. Now, I want to go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. And then if the Lord leads us this way, we need to to pray for a few people that God will help them in some situations. Uh, But Luke 10, 19 Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Then the next verse, Billy, is the kicker. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hey, that ought to make us all shout. Give me an amen now. I mean, that's what it's all about. That changes everything. In life's journey. Amen. The end result, glory. Praise God. So we should rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. You see, when a person is saved and born again, or converted, we could say, we're, we change families. Now, everyone on this earth is, from the, is in the family of Adam and Eve. That's true. We didn't come from a monkey. We come from Adam and Eve. But actually, because of the fall of Adam and Eve and sin entered into the human race, Satan became the lord of the human race. So in a, in a very real sense, those that are not converted and, can, and born again transferred from the family of the devil into the family of God. They are children of the devil. So everybody that's not saved is a child of the devil. I know you don't like that, but that's the way that it is. However, it doesn't have to be that way. There can be a supernatural transference from the family of the devil into the family of God, which the Bible says is the church. Only one way, and that's the cross. There is no other way to get transferred over. That's it, period. But I'm glad that I'm in the family of God. I'm glad about that. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, before it is 6 today, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us, 
even when we were dead in sins. In other words, away from God. He quickened us, or he made us alive. In other words, if you're away from the Lord, you're not living. That's right. uh, just going through the flesh motions, but your spirit is separated from God. That's what it means to be lost, everybody. We forget. Even when we were dead in sins, He has quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved. Yes, Monty, teach on that some more, will you please? For by grace are you saved. Amen. Praise God. God provides the grace. The gospel message comes. Faith comes to our heart. But then it's conditional. We must act on that, repent of our sins, ask for forgiveness, receive Christ as Savior and Lord by faith through prayer, and then a supernatural thing takes place, the greatest miracle known to the human race, and that is the regeneration, the new birth that comes from God only. Amen. Praise God. And he has, verse 6 now, he has raised us together, up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if your name's in the book, in the mind of God, we're already there. Amen. Just a matter of a few days, a few weeks, or maybe a few years. It's nothing, just a vapor. And it'll not be long, we'll be seated in the throne with Christ. Not that we become God, but we are Christ-like His children. And He told us we will sit in His throne as He is set in His Father's throne. Amen. So we're destined for a throne. When this experience takes place now, our position changes. Our position changes. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, Hallelujah. 13 and 14. Who has delivered us? Everybody say us. All right, that means you. Who has delivered us? We are delivered from the power of darkness. Amen. God doesn't save us in the power of darkness. He saves us out of it. And he has translated us. I like to say transferred translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, yes. the kingdom of God, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yes. Thou shalt amen about that. Amen. Your sins are gone. Amen. That is, if you've been translated into God's kingdom. Amen. If not, your sins remain. Now, that's very serious. We need to be sure that our sins are washed by the blood. Amen. Someone said, well, our sins are covered by the blood. No, that's Old Testament. That's right. That's right. Not only are we covered by the blood, we are washed by the blood yes. through and through. Amen. Praise God. That entitles us for a different position in God's domain. My position changed when I became a real believer in Christ. Amen. Now, a believer is not like the ungodly. Amen. I said, if the believer, supposed believer, did not experience the change, then they didn't get it. There must be a heart change. A direction changes. Attitudes change. Friends change. We go from the nightclub to the house of God. We get the guitars, get them saved, and play for God instead of playing for the devil out in the world. So all of it changes. Everything changes. The way you think changes. Your plans, your purposes, everything changes for the better. Praise God. What is a Christian? I was asked that many years ago. What is a Christian at Walmart? I've told this before, but it's, it's true. It's what happened. I was witnessing to a friend of mine. He wasn't saved. He married this Baptist gal and started going to church there. He said, you know, I just don't believe that way. 
Here he wasn't even saved. He said, I don't believe that way. He said, I'm so confused. Would you tell me what a Christian is? Now that, what would you say? I had to think about that. All these denominations that mean nothing. What is a Christian? If you ask someone, well, I do this and don't do that. And that's not what I ask. What is a Christian? He asked me, what is a Christian? And so I said, well, a Christian is in Christ and Christ is in the Christian. Get it? Christ in If Christ is in you, then you're in him. Amen. Your name's in the book. Praise God. How do we know for sure? Well, the Spirit bears with us. There's many ways that we know. In John 15, 4 to 6. John 15, 4 to 6 today. St. John. I think this is a problem in the modern day church is people really don't understand that they're saved. If you understand it, then you will begin to stop doing things that's displeasing to the Lord. You say, well, I can't help it. You get to feel the Spirit, He'll give you the power to overcome. Right. Now, the blood, of course, is the primary thing. But the Holy Spirit bears witness and helps us because of the blood. In the fourth verse, in Abide in Me, and I in you, as a branch can bear fruit of itself, cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. So there it is. There's the key. In verse 6, if a man abides not in me. See, either we do or we don't. If a, man, if a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and the men gather them and cast them to the fire, and they're burned. Now, I'm safe in saying that a person that abides in Christ, their name's in the book. A person that does not abide in Christ, their name's not in the book. Because they're going to be burned. And that's not good. That's very serious. So it's Christ in a person that really makes a difference. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, as you're going there this morning... Have you ever been around someone, some person? Because, you see, people carry spirits, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been around a person that your spirit matches up with them and you kind of, you know, there's no wall, there's no friction. But then you get around another person and, uh-oh, now, this is more than intuition. This is a spiritual discernment every child of God has, but you've got to learn how to hone that. See? I've learned, and now, some things I wished I did not know, but it's too late. Whom much is given, much is required. You can get around somebody who's got a bad spirit, hello now, and you immediately pick up on it, and it's not a good feeling, but it's still the Holy Spirit telling you. We've got to listen. God will always guide us and warn us and lead us and even warn us about evil entities that are in people, believe it or not. Some of you, you don't believe in demon possession. Well, we'll see in a few days when you run into one. Then you'll believe. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be, what? In Christ. Who's bewitched the church that they should not believe the simplicity of the gospel? If any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation. Right. Everything they did wrong from that point is gone, passed away. Listen, you don't have any past. I don't care what you did. I didn't do. If the blood has been applied to your life and you've given your life to Christ, you are a new person. Walk in that new nature that you got from God. And you will find, you will not work the works of the flesh 24-7. Actually, you'll begin to hate the sin that's in this world. So you see, we receive a new start when our position is changed. 
Amen. You can't turn over a new leaf on New Year's Eve and expect to change yourself. Fails every time. I've told myself, New Year's Eve, my declaration, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Have I done it yet? No. <laughs> I'm still working on it, though. Amen. Amen. And I know all you people, you're just skin and bones out there, just terrible, <laughs> you know. But we've got to take care of ourselves, too, okay? Push your Twinkies away. By the way, who brought that candy in? <laughs> yes, God bless you, Mike. Helen Brandon, praise God. I only get one piece of candy, that's all. I'm disciplined, praise God. Not really, I'm weak in that area, especially the cinnamon. Oh, man. All right. Now, if it's chocolate cake, okay. White, no. No. Then at the new birth, we will begin to understand what happened. You know, 42 years, everybody, I'm still receiving revelation of what happened to me when I received Jesus as Savior and Lord. <laughs> and it's still it's getting bigger and bigger and after a while God is praise God he's in charge and he's working on us someone said this God formed us but sin deformed us the Bible now informs us but Jesus transforms us amen <laughs> Praise God. That's why we need the word. Amen. We've got to have the word. So then a believer is saved from the penalty of sin. If your position is in Christ, you have been delivered and saved from the penalty of sin, which is hell. Now say amen to that. Amen. amen. You need to come into agreement with the truth of God's word. Don't be passive. We said, if your name's in the book, we have been delivered from the penalty of sin, the lake of fire. Amen. That's still weak. I said, if our name's in the book and we've been transferred into the kingdom of darkness, we have been delivered from the penalty of sin because our position is in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's better. If you can't get excited about your wonderful salvation... There's something wrong with your walk with God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Then secondly, the believer is saved from the power of sin. Yeah. I just can't help it. I just sin every day, 24-7. Well, can you go an hour without sinning? Right. Well, no. <laughs> could you go five minutes without sinning? Well, I think I could, preacher. Good. Live five minutes at a time. <laughs> the truth is, that's a cop out. Even before the Pentecost came, the Holy Ghost came, Jesus would tell them, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come on you. Didn't even have the Holy Ghost like we think about. So there's no excuse, you see. Amen. It's not the devil. No, no, it's the one that looks back at you in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Can't blame other people. No, we got to deal with this. And this is why Jesus came. To deal with it for us. But you got to accept his provisions. And that's the faith thing. We're saved from the penalty of sin and we're saved from the power of sin. Amen. Romans 6, 14 and 15 for a brief scripture this morning. Everybody say this. I'm saved from the power of sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you've got to understand who you are in Christ in order for that to be effective in your life. See? So it's all about who we are in Christ and who He is in us. Nothing else. Once that revelation comes into your being, you will not be like you used to be. 
We will be continually growing and changing more revelation, more anointing, more blessings of God, but more responsibility. Sin should not have dominion over you. Amen. Why? You're not under the law, but under grace, Brother Monty. <laughs> this is why sin will not have dominion over you, because you're under grace. Amen. Now, if you come back under the law, sin will have dominion over you. So we're in grace. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're in grace. Look at, look at verse 15 now. What then? Shall we sin? Shall we continually sin all the time, you know? Because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. So in other words, there must be a way to refrain from working the works of the flesh. There is a way, one way. Now I'm not saying we're perfect, but I'm saying we can have victory over sin and purity within Amen. We can walk in the divine nature and please the Lord. And we should. It's the will of God. But the problem is this. If we don't know how to conduct our lives or how to live for God, how do we operate this way? Many say they're Christians. Let me read a, a quote from Reinhard Bonnke. Did you ever hear of Reinhard Bonnke? The famous evangelist in Africa. He's gone to be with the Lord now. Why? His name is in the book. To say, this is a quote, I want to be a Christian, but I don't want to belong to a church would be like saying, I want to be married and stay single. You simply cannot become a Christian on your own. By new birth, you have entered the family of God and belong to the household of faith. Galatians 6.10, put it up for us. Galatians 6.10. So we belong to the household of faith, the body of Christ, the church. The reason we do, we've been born again, put in the family of God by a supernatural act of the Holy Spirit, our names in the book of life, and we are saved heaven bound. Amen. Don't leave it. Praise God. As we have therefore opportunity, let's do good to all men, especially to those who are household of faith. Amen. The household of faith. It means belonging to a group of people rather than an institution. Amen. Just as Jesus surrounded himself with 12 disciples, we need to be with other fellow followers of Jesus. Yeah, amen. The church shows us that the Christian faith is a together faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's a unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace with real believers. Although they may not understand some things, but nevertheless, if they're born of the Spirit of God, they're in the family of God. When you become a Christian, you were not only brought into a relationship with God, that's the position changes, you were brought into a relationship with other people too. To become a part of God's people, the church living on earth. End quote. So how can I say I love God when I don't want to fellowship with God's people. Right. Well, I just don't think I need to go to church to be saved. You need to go to church to stay saved. Right. Don't be deceived now. Because the Word of God is what keeps us in the straight and narrow. And it must be taught and preached exactly like it is. Amen. Then that gives us a foundation to stand on and the devil can't shake you. You won't be tossed to and fro with every one of the doctrine coming down the pike. Right. However, at this time now, believers must walk in a continual change. Yes. Billy said this morning, he don't like change. I know you were joking. But the truth is, most of us do not want to change. 
we are comfortable where we are. Well, I'm saved, you know. But if we're growing, and we must grow, then there'll be change. If you're not challenged to change, guess what? You're stunted. You're not growing. You cannot grow until you're challenged to change. Then you must choose to allow the Lord to have his way in your life and say, Lord, just change me. I'm tired of the way I am. So you got to get there. We're all the same. we got to get there. And if you think you do not need to be changed, I want to see Jesus. Yes, amen. I think I'll keep going. In 2 Corinthians 3.18... But we all with open face beholding as in a glass darkly, or a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Ghost is the one that helps us change from glory to glory. It's all glorious, but in the process, we're dropping off some negatives here that God is not pleased with. That's called growing in grace or being sanctified. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Then in 1 John 2, 6, He that saith he abides in him, that's he that saith he abides in Christ, ought himself to walk as he walked. God, now we're getting down to where the rubber meets the road. I think all of us are not as much like Christ as we should be. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> we need to trust God to change us. Someone said, well, prayer changes things. No, prayer changes people. People change the things. Amen. Amen. We can't keep doing the same thing year after year and expect change. We've got to make a rational decision based on the Scripture and the promptings of the Holy Spirit and then say, that's what I'm going to do. No devil's going to stop me. I watch people, yes, I'll be in church, yeah, I'm, I'll be there, and then they're not. Why? Because Satan pushes the button and he knows how to keep them out of church. And after a while... They're on real, real dangerous grounds. I suggest next time Satan pushes your button, tries to keep you out of church, keep you out of the things of the Lord, tell him to shut up. This is what we're going to do. You don't have any part in it. You're not Lord Jesus is. Quit yielding to the devil. Say amen to that now. Well, that devil, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Let's get it right. If that devil's lording over you, you're not submitted to God. Is this too rough this morning? But it's true. That's the reason I must search myself, God. If, I, if I'm out of your will, you get me in your will at all costs. I don't care. Whatever it takes. And we're stubborn. We're all stubborn. Aren't we? Yeah, we're stubborn. I had a llama one time that was so stubborn, you couldn't lead that thing. Those camels. <laughs> I understand what it means to be a stiff neck, but oh Lord, don't let us be a stiff neck. No, rebellious, stubborn, no. In 1 John 2, 6, did I get there? I already read that. Well, how many of us are walking like Jesus? Uh, well, I'm trying, I'm struggling. I will not walk like Jesus. It won't work. I'll confess till I'm blue in the face and I'll walk like Jesus. Not with that attitude. I was saying this morning, all of us need to come up a notch in the spirit realm. All of us need to let some stuff go on our lives that's dragging us down, holding us out of the anointing. Yeah. 
it's time to cut it loose. Let God be God in your life. Amen. And if we don't, it's going to get worse. It's up to us. I've learned something, though, about the Lord. He loves us enough not to give up. <laughs> Me, I'm getting kind of impatient in my older age. Yeah. I... <laughs> Here, here's a pen for you. <laughs> I'll give up on people after a few months. They're out. But God doesn't give up. In fact, as the Lord shared with me one time, he said, I follow people right to the coffin. I never give up. But once they're dead, as the tree falls, so shall it lie. This is something that scared me now, and I'm not saying you can accept this. Jesus said he'd never leave you nor forsake you by the Holy Spirit, right? But if you die in a backslidden condition running from God, when you physically die, then the Holy Spirit leaves you. Now, I disproved that. I'm saying this is very serious, everybody. We need to be like Samson. Shake yourself. The fellow sins coming by we can whip them. Praise God. It's all done by the power of God anyway. We've got to be clean before the Lord. The last thing I want to speak about this morning is Jeremiah chapter 1. Now we're going to have a little soul-searching time here today and see if someone's going to respond to the truth. Amen. Amen. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. Holy Spirit's dealing with people, but only a few people respond. We need to be quick to respond and get the, keep the air cleared between you and the Savior. So in... What I say, Jeremiah 18 and verse 1. God will change me one way or the other. God will change you one way or the other. Now, I know we're all friends here, right? But turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to change you one way or the other. <laughs> now, some of you are not playing fair. Well, whether you played fair or not, the truth remains God's going to change you one way or the other. God will change us one way or the other. The easy way or the hard way makes no difference. You will change. Why? God loves you enough. Praise God. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. Oh, boy. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. How many today it feels like you're on the potter's wheel? Yeah. I got news for you. You can't get off. Right. Try if you will. You cannot get off the potter's wheel. Yeah. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, we could say, O body of Christ, cannot I do with you as this potter? Says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O oh, church of God. <laughs> Praise God. It's no fun to be on the potter's wheel, but God chose you and put you on the wheel. And round and round she goes, the word stops, nobody knows. The water's thrown in your face, the heat comes, the pressure comes. But then the water comes and then the master's hand begins to mold and shape and change his creation. It hurts. And then he looks back 
uh-oh, there's a little flaw. And guess what? The same process again. No. Hallelujah. We're either on the wheel or we're going backwards. How many this morning, this is the question now. Are you listening? Do you feel like you're on the wheel and pressure's on in your life? Pressure's on. What we need to do today is acknowledge our God as sovereign. Can he not do with what he wants with his clay? We're all made from the dirt anyway. We need to acknowledge the fact that I'm on the wheel. God wants me to grow and change. And I need to submit to his lordship. You can't run your own life. We're not capable. We don't know anything. God is the one in charge. He's the one molding and making us and shaping us after his will. What do you want us to become? Like Jesus. That's the assignment of the Holy Spirit. To make us like the Son. And that's a big, big how. Well, the cross has got a whole lot to do with it, everybody. Everything to do with it. The Holy Spirit, then, we need to give him charge, control. Yield to him. And acknowledge the fact, okay, I know I got the pressure on me. I know I'm on the wheel, but you're chosen. You can't get off. The logical thing to do is admit to God, okay, I'm yours. Mold me and make me like you want me to be. Change me. Get the flaws out of my life. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect, says the Lord. I am perfect. Be you perfect. Be, be complete. The good thing about this vessel, after it's finished, then God pours, the, pours in the water and the wine. <laughs> you don't put new wine in old wineskins. No. First the new wineskin then the wine comes. Praise God. No matter where we are this morning in our Christian walk, if your name's in the book, what's the song that we sang? He's still working on me. Make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the sun, moon, and stars. Uh, help me out, Melissa. Uh, sun and earth, Jupiter and Mars, something like that. How lovely and patient he must be. He is still working on me. Are you glad about that? Some of us need a little polishing. You're judging. No, some of us need a little, a little touch up here and there. Amen. About the time we think we've reached the epitome of perfection and we're so spiritual, round and around you go. The way up is down. If you want to be exalted, you got to base yourself. you got to humble yourself and admit you need God. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Praise the Lord. That's a little exhortation. I hope you got something from it. Holy Spirit's always doing something in people's lives. Every service. But I want to ask you a question now. Will you admit that you're on the wheel and give God total control? Total control of your mess. Total control of your family's messes. Total control of your messes and messes. Total control of your soul. <laughs> we trust God with our eternal soul. Even our body. We've got to trust God for healing 
our bodies, minds. Your mind is more than a brain. We've got to let God have total control of our entire being and let Him change us where we need to be changed. I don't know. Only He knows. But He is changing people. He will change people. But we need to present ourselves before Him and acknowledge the fact, okay, I accept the change starting today. I want to be closer to God and more like Christ and less like the devil I used to act like, huh? Is that you today? If it is, don't wait one second. Get down here to the altar and we're going to commit our lives to Christ for this purpose to change us from glory to glory.